I was talking to a conference the other day, which had a lot of people from the health service and from social care, who were going to be commissioning the new services in the new environment. Um, so I was talking to them about wasn't there a great business case to use voluntary organisations. And actually, the, the more I talked to them, the more I felt, actually, this is our moment, not just for the voluntary sector, but for WRVS as a whole. So I just wanted to explain to you why, why I felt that and what that might mean for the organisation. Everybody knows there are huge changes in demographics happening. The amount of older people in society are growing rapidly and that's going to continue to grow. And in fact, if you look at this graph, it's got a really clear picture, I think, of what's happened over the last a hundred years and actually what the projections are for the next 80 plus years and, and you can see if you went back to 1901 there were about 2 million people who were over the age of 85 and if we project forward to 2081 which is still somewhere in the future but not that far in the future we're talking about there being 20 something million people who are over the age of 85. So a massive shift from a couple of million to 20 something million over that period of time. And one of the things, one of the reasons that really resonates for me is it's clearly going to mean there are really big changes in society, some challenges, but some real big opportunities as well. And I, I look at this graph and I look at 2081 and I've got a, I've got a 10 year old daughter uh, and in 2081, Emily's going to be 80, 81, something like that. Well, she is going to be 81. Um, and I kind of picture her sitting there in that very big spike of 80-plus-year-old uh, people thinking, hang on a minute, Dad, you knew about this stuff. You knew all these changes were going to happen. I thought you worked in WRBS. What, what did you do about it? So it's really important for me to think about, well, what should we do? What should we contribute to this new world? And there's lots of discussion, you'll have heard it, about why this terrible shift in ageing population is happening and how bad it's going to be for the country. But I just want to talk about whether, whether these changes are a tragedy or whether they're a triumph. And I think that the really startling statistic is if you just go back to when the NHS started in 1948, 48% of the population died before they were 65. And now it's less than 18%. Now, you can think about that as a tragedy or a terrible thing, or you can actually think of it as a triumph, as a triumph of nutrition, of healthcare, of housing. It's a huge, huge triumph for society that we're not having half our people die before they're age 65. But it's not really talked about in those terms. So just go back a few weeks to the budget, and here's the Chancellor saying, we will also address the rising costs of an ageing population and the burden this places on future generations. Well, it's not a burden. <clears throat> so let me just correct some of those uh, assumptions a moment. We did some work in WRVS last year where we looked at the financial benefits that older people make to the population and to the country. And you can see at the bottom line of this chart, there's some really clear numbers that say, last year, even taking into account all the costs of health care and pensions and provision, people who are over 65 contributed a net £40 billion to the British economy. And as that group of older people increases, which we've seen from the graph that it will, we think in 20 years' time, then the over 65s will be contributing 75 billion net of all the costs of looking after them to the economy. If you just think about the fashion industry in the UK, contributes 20 billion to the economy. So older people contribute twice as much to the economy as the British fashion industry does. Yet we don't have older people's weeks where we celebrate the fashion industry. All we have is papers full of what a terrible, terrible problem this is. So the question for me is, how does the health and the social care system respond to some of these challenges?
Here's, here's a great quote that I really like from Albert Einstein, and it says, Insanity, how do you define it? It's doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Or well, there's an even better quote from Nietzsche, which says, Insanity in individuals is something rare, but in groups, parties, nations and epochs, it's the rule. In other words, we all kind of think the same things over and over again. So let me show you a, a, a picture of how the hospital and health system is working at the moment. If you come up to the top of this circle, uh, you'll see there's pressure on hospital beds that's increasing. And because the pressure on beds is increasing, people get discharged sooner. And because they're just discharged from hospitals sooner, they don't have enough rehabilitation time. So they get home and they're actually not well enough to be at home. So what we end up doing, we end up putting them into expensive residential or expensive nursing care so that they can be looked after. But that takes money out of the system, which means there's less money to prevent people getting ill. And because there's less money to prevent people getting ill, hospital admissions rise. And because hospital admissions rise, then the pressure on beds increases. And so it goes on over and over and over. And the greater the number of older people with long-term conditions that are expensive to manage and treat, the bigger this problem becomes. But the question for me is, can't WRVS help break that cycle? Because at the moment, the way people think about the system is the answer always has to be more nurses, more doctors, more care homes, more money. And what I think is the answer is more volunteers and more organisations like WRVS. So let me explain a bit about that and how that might work. If I just go back a bit in, at the beginning of our history, we had this fantastic organisation that was created because there was a national emergency heading our way. People knew we were likely to be into a war and probably a world war. And WRVS was one of the means we galvanised the population, and particularly the women in the population, to play a really important, di different role uh, and to help support Great Britain uh, and really help deliver some change in society. Now, we're not quite as glamorous these days uh, as, as that photo looks, and here we are zooming around in our WRVS Peugeots, which isn't quite as, um, as sexy as it looked on motorbikes in 1938. But actually, I kind of have this sense that there is this impending national emergency happening again, and actually there's huge changes, huge costs, huge problems, potentially, which we could solve and actually make the growth in older people a triumph and not a massive problem. And if you go back to those early days of WRVS, you can see us here on hospital wards. And why were we on hospital wards? Well, we were on hospital wards because the medical treatment was happening, but there was no provision in hospitals for care and for looking after patients' needs. And then you zoom forward, 60 or 70 years from that original photograph and actually here we are still in hospitals and why are we in hospitals because there's not any care for patients what's all the discussion in the papers at the moment it's because nurses are doing their job doctors are doing their jobs but nobody's looking after the patients and thinking about do they need a newspaper what's going to happen to them when they come out are they actually getting their food have they got time to sit and eat their food and be properly hydrated so the need's still the same, even where, if you were back in 1940-something or in 2012. And the role that we can play, I think, is still the same.